We're back. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and this is Silicon Angle's The Cube, where we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. We're here at the VTUG Winter Warmer, live from Gillette Stadium. You can see in our background, the Patriots aren't here. They're, uh, I don't know if they're out of the state yet. Uh, maybe they're acclimating to the mile high air, thin air, but uh, we're here. And Mark Cantlin, Mark Cantlin the second is here. He is uh, team lead uh, of desktop applications at the UMass Memorial Health Care Center in Worcester. A uh, fantastic facility, a lot of innovation going on there. Mark, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Hey, thanks for having me. So you guys have a great reputation uh, in the area. Uh, uh, really wonderful alternative to the, to the Boston hospitals, especially for those of us who live sort of in the, in the central west part of the state. So um, tell us a little bit about the organization and your role there. Um, so we're a, a decent sized regional hospital with you know, five main campuses and uh, probably hundreds of CMG sites where they do you know, in outpatient kind of work. Um, we have, I want to say, somewhere in the vicinity of, at the moment, 16,000 devices that we have to manage. Um, there was a push of sev several years back for us to start moving some of that to uh, the virtual side of things, you know. Um, so what my role there is, is I, ha I have a small team of folks that, that manage images and the Zen desktop infrastructure that we use there to, um, you know, deliver those desktops. It's obviously a big Citrix shop, right? I mean, big Citrix sort of shop. The gold standard in, in what was, used to be, we used to call it uh, VDI or desktop virtualization. It's really now expanded into with they, mobile. Yeah, they oh. have a lot of services. Yeah, so I mean, the sort of desktop virtualization is an out, outdated term um, in a way, but we still use it. But when we say desktop, we're talking about all the mobile devices as well, right? It, so, yeah. So talk about the impact that mobile has had and how you've addressed that. Um, so you know, the, it's interesting because as a hospital, of course, we have to deal with the HIPAA violation, uh, not HIPAA violations, but HIPAA if the, standards. If there are HIPAA violations, you have to yeah. deal with them. But yep. uh, we hopefully, don't want, we don't want any of those. <laughs> Um, and uh, so data and the security of that data is pretty tantamount in what, the things that we need to deal with. It's, it's um, you know, we can't let pac patient data get out. That would be a really bad thing. Uh, so mobile devices are interesting because a lot of folks bring their devices to work with them nowadays. That's not the case from, you know, we didn't used to have to deal with that sort of thing, but everybody has a smartphone and they want with their wireless connect connectivity and they want to be able to do printing and get their emails and whatnot and that's a, a the, you know that's pretty a pretty big deal with a hospital because some of that email that floats around is obviously patient sensitive uh, I haven't actually become super familiar with this offerings that Citrix has with the in their mobile space right at the moment but we're actually meeting with them in about a week to go over that and uh, possibly look at whether or not we're going to be integrating it into our current environment. So how do you deal with bring your own device? Um, at the moment, with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we had it's a our... It's strategy, just not a yeah, very good one. It's not a very good one. <laughs> um, we, we don't have them connect to our network, is what it boils down okay. to. So you, know, so we, you just say no. It, we'd basically just say no at the moment it, with the promise that we're w developing you know, a strategy to bring that kind of thing in. So in your world, the, the, the risks obviously outweigh the rewards because if you, if you allow people to connect and you haven't thought it through, um, that's screwed basically. That's just it. If we, if You're we, just, just, if we just jump into it blindly, it could create all kinds of headaches and lawsuits and who wants those? In the, in the requirements that you're hearing from customers are those that you sort of stated before, they want wireless access, they want, they want printing capability, they want access to their, all their apps, some of their apps. You know. um, yeah, I mean, more and more, you know, we see doctors that come in with, with iPads and say, uh, you know, I'd like to be able to do my, the work that I need to do while I'm walking around with an iPad, not have to stop at a terminal or bring a laptop around with me just to be able to hold, you know, something as convenient as a tablet or an iPad and say, you need this prescription and this is, send it off to the next doctor and that sort of thing. So, um, obviously the infrastructure to put something like that in place is, is enormous anyway, to just to have the back end to deal with that, the, the software components of all that kind of stuff. But then the security of that device, whether or not it stores that information and whatnot, it's, it requires a lot of thought and consideration about how you implement it. Uh, John Furrier, who, uh, who is uh, the, my partner and 
uh, the co-host of the Cube, you know, typically, was texting me earlier saying, um, what do practitioners, asking, what do practitioners and, and how do practitioners get information on the top conversations? You're on Twitter. Um, do you use Twitter for the top conversations? If so, or even if not, what are the top conversations specifically related to this topic? Healthcare. Sort of to, to healthcare and to, to, to encompassing mobile that you're seeing. Um, let's start with, with healthcare. What are you seeing there in terms of the top conversations then, that you're tracking? Well, um, I, I probably, I wouldn't say that I use Twitter a whole lot to track this stuff. I count on my team to find that stuff on Twitter and then just keep me informed. Okay, so in the, in the Twitter rubric of top conversations, <laughs> what are the top conversations that you see happening wherever uh, that you're tracking? Well, secure, I mean, security is a big one. It's, it's got to be a big one because any organization, what, in, whether you're a hospital or not, I mean, you want to be able to protect your your clients and your data and your employees and, and whomever it is that has sensitive information passing through your, you know, your systems. So security is huge with these mobile devices, bring your own device. Even corporate supplied mobile devices, you've got to have a plan in place. So I want to come, come, come back to security, but are there, before we do that, unpack that a little bit, but are there any other conversations that you're sort of, you know, top of mind for you? Um, I guess for the you know, the, the portability of the app underlying infrastructure of the applications being able to work on all of these various devices is also kind of a, a big conversation, which is where, you know, the virtualization step part comes in huge, especially with, like, uh, Zen App and uh, Zen Client and those sorts of things where we're actually able to say, okay, bring your device. We don't really even have to do much but make sure that it functions and then we can make sure you have access to these things like the ap applications you need with, through Zen, uh, Zen App. So it's the virtualization of the infrastructure to accommodate these, these devices, and, and is it also, and I know this, is, well, I, I think this is not your, your area of expertise, but also the applications themselves. You know, you've got, you got the mobile version, you go to the full well, site. Well, that's just it. So, I mean, you know, uh, for a while, the buzzword in application development was, oh, these are portable, you know? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, what makes it a, an app portable? Does that mean that you can use it on a web browser or do you use it on a web browser on a Linux device yeah. or a web, any web browser? Or does it require a specific web browser? And I, you know, in healthcare, specifically in healthcare, which I think, I think, I don't know whether uh, accurate or not that it gets the reputation of being sort of dinosaur as far as techno te technology is concerned in most places, with maybe a few exceptions here and there. Um, that, uh, I, I lost my train of thought, I apologize. But the... <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're talking about um, uh, um, the, the portability of the app I was going to ask you about, you know, HTML5. Are you guys you know, writing and rewriting in HTML5? But basically, making that work on Linux or Unix or whatever yeah, device. Yeah, I mean, what 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 defines portable now? Mm. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, so a lot of the applications we use, they 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 are web apps now. You know, you enter your patient information through a web browser. So you were saying that. Um, the medical community is not known for being aggressive early adopters of technology and, and sort of innovators there. Is that well? Is that a in bad some rap? cases, it's. I I think that it's you know it's probably getting a lot better, but um, is part of that historically that doctors have sort of resisted and they like writing you know messy notes or I, is it, it could be. It, it's hard. They like shiny toys too, though. Because yeah, they, they do. Certainly, right. They certainly so mobile, want their iPads. Mobile should mobile change that, right? I mean, right. That's mobile a, should change it's that. A, it's a renaissance, I would think, in healthcare. Yeah, I in would terms of technology adoption. So, you, do you yep. feel specifically that the the bad rap that healthcare has has received over the last you know several decades in terms of being technology adopters will change as a result of mobile? Oh, I think that it's it's a huge space that's definitely giant. People are definitely moving, you know, boulders in that in that direction. They want healthcare wants to be as wired as it can get. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and I believe there's actually regulations, because I, I don't know these regulations off the top of my head, but electronic health records say no more. Yeah, I mean, EMR <laughs> is basically a mandate, right? I mean, Yeah, yeah, so. mandate. So, and they want any doctor, anywhere you go to a hospital, you go on vacation, go to a hospital, they want to be able to have access to that information 
you know. And, and, and you've like, got to show meaningful use to get paid as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a business yep. angle uh, also here. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Stuart. Mark. I'm wondering if I can dig into kind of your environment a little bit. So sure. you know, one one of the biggest challenges that you know most places have going to desktop virtualization or VDI is you know do I build a desktop team because it used to be I had just a desktop people going around and and handling all that. Um, I'm wondering, can you talk? About how long have you been doing uh, the solution? You know, how was the kind of creation of your team and how do you interface with the rest of the kind of the IT staff? Um, well, that's interesting because we have uh, those conversations daily uh, <laughs> about what's going on. So, so background, w they decided prior to hiring me that they wanted a virtual environment, that they wanted to be able to put and replace physical devices with thin clients in thing, places like patient rooms and uh, you know, in the hallways and stuff and preferably on mobile carts so that they don't have expensive hardware just laying around all over the place. Um, additionally, it, they, I believe, envisioned that it would provide them with a more stable and consistent environment so that doctor going on third floor and the fourth floor is going to get the same device no matter where he goes. Um, so we, they planned and built a, an, an environment w using uh, the VMware hypervisor, ESX, and Citrix Zen Testop to provide those things. Uh, and then proceeded to go around and replace a lot of devices in the hospital with uh, with thin clients. Or yeah. so, so just curious, what, what's what's the hardware stack sitting under that? Um, the, you mean the company making the thin clients? Well, the the, the thin clients, the server, the storage, you know, the, the, those pieces. Uh, yeah. Um, so the v the VMware stuff on the, the servers that they're all on, um, I don't actually know. I okay. don't get to, I don't get to see that it, stuff it, it's, much. It's, it's not honest, relevant it's, to what you're doing. Is what no, you're no, it's yeah, not yeah, re you relevant. You manage the software and the desktops. Yeah, so. I mean we use wise thin clients too. Okay. So, so um, everybody talks about you know server virtualization. You hear desktop to virtualization. Um, they're two different worlds. Aren't yes, they? we do both. So so talk about a lot of people sort of lump them in the same category. Oh, I buy my you know virtualization from VMware, I'll just get my desktop virtualization from them too, which may or may not be the, the, a good thing or a bad thing, but what's the difference, the big differences that practitioners should think about between how they look at their strategy for infrastructure virtualization, specifically you know, server storage and networking, versus desktop and mobile virtualization? Um, so, if I understand correctly, you, uh, the way that we do it, at the very least, is it's largely integrated in similar systems. So we have, you know, massive amounts of hosts to host the desktop. The we the the vir virtual farms they have a lot of hosts, um, and some of those are very similar to what we do for the virtualization of the uh, server stuff that we virtualize, because some of the servers are virtualized, obviously, whereas some of them are not, um, due to different requirements. The uh, the, the desktop stuff is, um, I think, a little easier to think about because you, you shoot for how much do I need to provide to the client so we can put, you know, pretty simple mathematics to find out what sort of memory and whatnot you need to throw at it. Servers can be trickier because they're servers. They're all going to, each one requires different things, different amounts of storage, different memory requirements processor requirements. Well, and the workload's different, right? Yep. The yep. sizing is probably different. Yeah, so. we can guarantee, you know, that most users are going to do X, Y, and Z on the desktop. It's not that difficult. Certainly right, I mean, the so. desktop top workload profile is going to be different than a server workload profile. It's a lot probably more generic. Lot, okay, more generic, but probably more rights as well, right? Uh, well, no, not, not necessarily. necessarily. Not necessarily. There's more reading going on at the... Um, yeah, I mean, I, because it depends. I, I guess that does sort of depend on, on the user. Yeah. Like a home, somebody who does home coding that codes medical stuff, they're they're going to be doing a lot of writes. Mm. Mm -hmm. But a doctor may may not necessarily. They might just be looking at the charts or the uh, X-rays, images, and that sort of thing. Right. Um, let's go back to security a little bit. So you, you said you know that's the top priority. That's one of the conversations that that you're sort of people should be paying attention to. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if we could unpack that a little bit, because in your in your world, the, like we mentioned HIPAA, this security and privacy, which are like two sides of the same coin, so you've got that dimension of complexity. 
but you've also got physical security, hospitals, people coming and going. You know, they're generally pretty open. Uh, you've certainly got logical security. Sure, anybody security. walks into a hospital, too. <laughs> What's that? Anybody can walk into a right. hospital. I mean, basically, that, right? Yep. So you've got that aspect of it. So, so how do you look at security? H how would you advise your fellow practitioners in your industry to, to look at security? <laughs> Closely. <laughs> so where do you start? Um, I, would, I would definitely start, I, you know, I, it's basic network security. I, I can't tell you how many places I've walked into where if you see an open port in the wall and just take an Ethernet cable and plug into it, it, it works. And that's kind of a frightening thought. <laughs> We love that on the cube because we can broadcast anywhere. But yeah, uh, well, there's there's <laughs> there's that, but it, uh, you know, base, basic network security that should never be ignored. As far as from the virtual side, it's, I think, uh, you know, as long as you've got a pretty solid team that understands how to run all the switches and firewalls that come along with it. I mean, that's tricky stuff. Right. Okay. Good. Um, all right. Uh, we'll give you, Mark, the last word. Uh, put the bumper sticker on your 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 trip here to the Gillette, your first trip to Gillette Stadium. First trip to Gillette what are you, Stadium. What are you sort of hoping to to get out of as you're as you're pulling away on Route One? What's the bumper sticker say on the on the back of your car? Oh, let's see, that's tricky. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I should. I don't know. Uh, uh, good. <laughs> yeah. Any any final nuggets you want to take from you were at the attending the Amazon uh, event this morning. Oh, up this morning. So, yeah, the uh, Amazon event this morning was was fantastic. I, I I've come from uh, I'm a 13 generation New Englander, so I, most of us are pretty well dyed in the wool. We're going to do it ourselves and own everything that we do. Walking away from that, I think I'm a changed man. Seeing the you know hybrid services that you can get in the public cloud. Great. That, that, that's a much better bumper sticker. I, I went to Gillette, attended the VTUG Winter Warmer, and now I'm a change. <laughs> I'm a change. There you go. So, it okay, so you were impressed with the Amazon pitch. So you've not heard the Amazon I, you marketing know, pitch before. Uh, not, not, from some, not from an, Am an Amazonian. Right. <laughs> right. Well, well, when you hear it from <laughs> Amazon's. <laughs> I, I guess, yeah. When you hear it from non-Amazonians, you, 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 you hear a lot of, you know, it's not secure, it's not this, it's not blah, blah, blah. blah but... What impressed you about the, the pitch? I just think that they've gone, it makes sense that they've gone to such great lengths to uh, you know, ensure that all this stuff works. Obviously, the need for it to work for them was the driving thing behind it. And I, I don't know that that had ever necessarily occurred to me. But the story of, of how Why AWS it is. came about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, that is an interesting story. But one has to be impressed with the multitude of services that they provide and the pace at which I, they it's provide amazing. them. It's remarkable. And then, but as I say, when you when you when you talk to Amazon, all they do is not all they do, but but they really emphasize security. Mm -hmm. Did that surprise you? Um, no, I mean it didn't surprise me that they emphasized it. Um, it surprised me to see that uh, you know they had. I, I'm not sure what the relationship is, but that they're certified to do HIPAA, you know, security to, to conform to those regulations. Yeah, they've got HIPAA compliance. They've got. I mean, they throw up all the. the I just four hadn't been letter, paying that close attention. Yeah, I guess. Acronyms. So would would you, do you believe that? Well, first of all, is 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 UMass Medical using Amazon in any way that you know of? No, but there has uh, obviously been a lot of talk. Are you positive? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Okay. Pretty but sure. Not a hundred percent. Not a hundred percent, but, 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 but I would likely, say ninety-eight percent. Yeah, you'd probably sure. know about it if somebody were doing it because it's a board level thing in in your I, world. Right? As far as I can tell, right now we do everything internally. Mm -hmm. um, but there's obviously been talk uh, with the world sort of moving towards these public and uh, hybrid clouds where things are working together uh, to go in that direction. To the extent that it goes in that direction, how involved do you feel the IT department will, will be in that decision and in the managing or deploying or brokering of those services? Well, that's a trick question because we won't be allowed to make any decisions. <laughs> but well, but you can influence decisions. You can provide advice. You can prov you, you can you could give uh, uh, notions of blind spots that that management needs to pay attention to. Sure. I sure. mean, somebody in IT will will, will uh, be at the, have a seat at the table, won't they? Or no? You just oh, uh, I yeah. I mean, culture definitely. leaves it more. This is what we're doing. Make it happen, or is it? I guess the level that my that I'm at in my team, I we would be more like grunts. So no, from my level. But yes, there'd be IT involvement. Uh, you know, upwards. Well, but oftentimes the, the 
quote unquote grunts actually can help you discover blind spots. So you guys in the corner office maybe t talk more to the grunts. And, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> figure out what oh you're my, before my you team's great. They're the best <laughs> team in the whole hospital. But the, uh, um, the well, but I mean, in general, uh, maybe even not in your specific situation, but when you think about IT in general and the whole notion of, 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 of business lines, swiping a credit card, CMO says, hey, I want to just go do a project. I'm going to hire a developer and go do my own Amazon thing. It sounds like that's not the culture of you know, your organization. Oh no, we would have to integrate a lot of different teams to come together and discuss, well, how is it and when and why is it that mm -hmm. we are using these, these services? Well, I mean, specifically with the hybrid cloud, the, the beauty of it is, of course, you know, during peak hours of business, you can just utilize all of the resources that you need. They're there, take them, you know, and then shut them off and not pay for them when they're done. And from a hospital's point of view, especially a nonprofit like UMass, I mean, that's a big deal. Well, one of the things I often hear about uh, Amazon is it's more expensive. And I've, I've said myself a number of times, renting is, is always more expensive than owning. But, let me ask you a question. What percent or is your infrastructure utilized? Right if now? You think about servers and, and, and even, even desktop infrastructure. What percent, would, would you guess, is, is, is utilized, even virtualized? infrastructure, what? All of it, 50%. 50%, okay, yeah. so there's another 50% that, yeah. right? Yep. Now did you see, did he talk about uh, uh, the, the service that Amazon announced? It's uh, Amazon Workspaces, I believe it's called. Did he talk about the that The desktop as a service, yeah. he, did, he did mention that, yep. And that's, uh, that's I mean, uh, that would be of interest. As a VDI guy, that interested you, yeah, oh, okay. Yep. So that's it's what, $50 per user per month or something like that, I mean, does that yeah. catch your attention? Does that make you go, hmm? Well, I think that, uh, you know, from talking to some of the higher ups above me about what they would use this for, when you bring in vendors to, you know, develop new projects or work on things, they don't necessarily want to have to give them the resources that they've, you know, portioned for use by, their employees and, and clients and whatnot, but to use something like the Amazon Web Services mm. to deploy desktops that we can build proof of concept systems and whatnot in, which that appeals to them, at least that's the thought at this le point, like, oh, that's that sounds like something we should do, then we're. Yeah. All right, Mark, well, th we're out of time. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and uh, appreciate you coming by. Welcome to Gillette Stadium. I hope you enjoy your, your first trip here. and. Uh, Thanks again. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. This is the Cube Silicon Angles live production of the VTUG Winter Warmer. We're here at Gillette Stadium. We'll be right back.